So first and foremost, I think that all of us, regardless of what your intention is, should set up your bed for safe sleep. Because we know that 60-ish percent of Americans end up having their baby in their bed, even if they say they're not going to. So I think that the abstinence practice that is communicated by U.S. governing bodies is actually really irresponsible. I think it's like a public health crisis that we don't teach parents how to sleep safely with babies. We are becoming a misnomer. So like the U.K. has a really beautiful pamphlet that they send home with every parent that says, here's how to safe sleep you with sleep safely with your baby. So like that's step one, because I think you need to preempt the chance that you might need to bring your baby in bed. Before I go into like the mechanics of how, I also want to say that I have people come to me from all walks of life, all areas of infancy, like all parts of infancy. And sometimes I have somebody come to me that says, okay, I sleep trained and I didn't get any more sleep. So what the hell was that all about? And can you help me get some sleep? And it's important to note that the studies we have on sleep training that are not very well executed and like pretty poorly designed, what they show is that there's either no change in sleep or 15 minutes more on average. So it's worth noting that A, there's a category of babies that it's not even going to work for because of their temperament, right? Like they're not going to stop signaling. And then B, it may not even result in more sleep. So I think we need to rethink that like this false equivalency that sleep training equals more sleep. It doesn't always. And if you are looking at our biology as mothers and the way that our brains work, we actually have to exit sleep and go into like a much more awake mode to walk down the hallway and go attend to our baby than we do if our baby's in bed with us or next to us, in which we could just rouse slightly and then go right back to sleep. So there's some data that suggests that bed sharing, breast sleeping, which is when you're like sleeping in the cuddle curl position, which I can talk about, babies and mothers get quite a bit more sleep because they're just not disturbed. You know, you're you're horizontal all night, even if you're waking to feed. I like to point cross-culturally because we're very aware of SIDS in the US. Most of us were born in the thick of the back to sleep campaign. So it was like baby on their back alone in the crib. That's safe. The irony that we all had like bumpers and stuffed animals in our cribs, which is like horribly unsafe. But that's a, that's the primer for a lot of us. That's like culturally where we come from. And we're very scared of sleeping with our babies. There's there was there were horrible public health campaigns that were really fear-mongering in throughout the 90s that made people terrified to sleep with their babies. Whereas in other countries, like let's take Japan, for example, I like to cite Japan because they have one of the highest rates of bed sharing in the world and the lowest rate of SIDS. These two things are mutually exclusive. SIDS is multifactorial. It's really complex. Bed sharing can be done really safely. The world's leading researcher on SIDS, her name's Dr. Helen Ball. She's at Durham University in the UK, and she actually has a really great website. It's um, called the Baby Sleep Information Source, or BASIS is the acronym. And it enumerates exactly how to sleep safely based on her research. And she recently updated the guidelines to say that any clear, flat surface is a safe place for a baby to sleep. And that includes your bed if it's set up properly. So that would look like no pillows. You have the covers like below your knees or low down, or you're wearing an adult sleep sock and the baby's got their sleep sack on. No swaddling, no like drapes. If you have long hair, tie it back. La Leche League also has this enumerated in a way that's called the safe sleep seven that parents can really easily look up. But the biggest factors are smoking Mm. and being under the influence of alcohol or a sedative. So in the absence of those things, Bed sharing, when set up properly, is really beautifully safe and also like, you know, totally our biological norm. So it's protective against SIDS. Being on the ground is ideal. If you've got a really new baby and you're in cuddle curl and they can't roll, I'm not particularly worried because you would move toward the middle of the bed. You're like laying on your left or your right side. Your arm is up here and your baby's head is where your breast is basically. And then your arm 
is like up here around them and your legs, your knees are bent around them. So you're in like a C shape. They're really great. And for a lot of families that are like viscerally uncomfortable with bed sharing, they start there because it is attached to their bed. They can like pull their baby over and breastfeed or pull their baby over and bottle feed. And then I often see people are like, yeah, I don't need that thing. I'm good. Cause like, like build confidence up and they're like, yeah, I can right. bring my baby in bed. But, but also right. some babies and some mothers sleep better at a certain point with a little bit of proximal distance. And like, that's not super common because babies love the constant sensory stream that is their mother. But some babies, depending on like their sensory inputs might want a little bit of space in which a sidecar works great. There are a couple different ways to set up safe sleep if you've got a sibling. So I have an almost four-year-old and I have a five-month-old and my five-month-old is in cuddle curl with me. He actually, funny enough, uh, really likes to be a little bit farther from me. And my daughter was a koala baby and slept on me for like 15 months of her life. So temperament is something we didn't even talk about there. So he is like on the outside. He's like over here. And then I'm like here. And then my husband's here. And then my daughter's over there. So as long as the baby and the toddler are not next to each other, it's okay. 